Hello again, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's still Sunday, March 21st. It's 9.49 a.m. And now I'm going to bring you some words from the Lord that I believe are from the Lord. Um, as with any kind of prophecy from anybody, you take it to the Lord and get confirmation for yourself if you don't believe it. Or you can just shelve it and... Uh, Pray for confirmation, and when you see it, then you'll know. All right. The first one is small straws and a soft wind. Now, this is really interesting because this was from yesterday, I think, at 6.16 a.m. And today's starts off with, to those who feel useless and out of touch, and on it goes. This one says, To those who feel useless and out of touch, I say, do not despair. What has felt like a chokehold will be released and doors will open before you that will put you on the road to recovery and progression. Refuse to sit down in a mood of desperation or wallow in self-pity. Arise internally and see your possibilities. I have given you hope and a future. And, they, and she uses that scripture that I just love, Jeremiah 29, 11, but I don't know what version this is from and I don't like it and you'll see why for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans for prosperity and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope now, that's a sad, doesn't that sound a little worldly plans for prosperity I don't know what version it is, like I said, but it's supposed to be, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for good and not for evil or harm. I've seen not for harm. Plans for hope and for a good future. Something like that. Plans to give you hope and a future. Not prosperity. Now, you can prosper in ways besides financially. But that just, to me, says for you're going to get all the kind of money you need. You're never going to want or lack or have to pray for it again. God wants us dependent on him. And he knows if we're going to be remaining dependent on him based on our financial needs, or if he needs to keep us praying because, well, I think you know what I mean. We need to stay dependent on our Lord no matter what. Moving on. This is a message that was put in, uh, submitted to Dawn by Ruth Smith. Or perhaps she found it somewhere. or so, Someone sent it to her. I don't know. It's called... Come quickly and boldly unto my throne of grace. And it was received apparently Wednesday, January 13 at 21.15 p.m. I was talking to the Lord just now. Speaking of Adam and Eve, I heard how I longed that they would come to me unafraid and repent of their sins when they disobeyed my command that they cannot eat of the fruit of that tree then I can restore that wonderful relationship with them but instead they went into hiding themselves they went into hiding themselves do not be afraid of making mistakes. If you did, come quickly and boldly unto my throne of grace. 
and I will wash you clean with the blood I shed for you on the cross to make you white as snow again. That's what repentance does, people. When you repent, you're white as snow again. Don't go into hiding. You'll fall into the devil's trap to make you far away from me. This is very dangerous. And that's the end of the message. Okay. Um, okay. This, this one, these are all dated March 20th. Correction is not what your easygoing nature likes to do, but some is needed. You are seeing what others are not. I need you to step up to the plate and wait for the right pitch. I will show you when. Scripture says my kindness leads to repentance. Some are rejecting, not knowing what they are doing. There needs to be a breakthrough in forgiveness, beginning with those who do not realize they are rejecting. Now, I'm not real sure what he means by that. So, this is one of those you'd want to take to the Lord if you're not sure. Okay, so there needs to be a breakthrough in forgiveness beginning with those who do not realize they are rejecting. Rejecting what? Rejecting the Lord? Rejecting correction? Could be either one. Rejecting the Holy Spirit, that's a biggie. So if you see a Christian brother or sister, if you've gotten the sticks out of your own eye, and you know you have, whether, whether it was through heart healing and deliverance, at a deliverance conference, Whatever you know you've gotten rid of your sin, sinful life. Sure, we all make mistakes every day. Nobody's perfect. That's why Jesus made repentance available for all. We can repent till the day he comes, till the day we die. Okay? And be made white as snow again. Okay. So just... Take it to the Lord. Lord, am I rejecting anything I'm hearing that I shouldn't be? Am I rejecting your Holy Spirit in any way that I shouldn't be? Pray about it if you feel a prick in your conscience over this. All right. She puts Romans 2.4 from the ESV on here. Or do you presume... On the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance. And that was given to Bev Robinson. Okay. Now, this one can be taken wrong if you don't take it right, and I'll explain after I read it. Plain and simple, you just feel depleted. How many of us are there? You have run yourself ragged and feel worn out from well-doing. I know some people like that. You are at a place where your strength and stamina have all but left you. 
there's such a thing as overdoing doing good. It is essential for you to disengage for your own health and well-being. Receive me as your comforter. Value time for yourself before any type of breakdown takes you out of service. Believe me, it can happen to Christians. There's different kind of breakdowns. Mental, emotional, where you just cry, cry, cry because of all that's going on and you feel like you can't do a thing about it. I've been there, done that real recently. Not for long, but still, all that crying was very tiring, you know. We get tired. And if you stay up too late trying to do your service for the Lord and you don't make yourself get enough sleep and whatever, you can you could have a physical breakdown. And it's not speaking it. I'm not speaking life into it. I'm saying our God made our bodies to work six days and rest one. You do not have to keep the Sabbath on Saturday. If y'all knew how they did the Sabbath back in the Old Testament, it had to rely on the new moon to decide when the next month started. And then there was day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, Sabbath. They worked six Sabbath. It could have been on a Monday. It could have been on a Tuesday. It might have been on a Sunday. But now, for convenience sake, so they can always plan, you know, because we have to work and things have to be planned. Life is totally different. Things changed when Jesus Christ died on the cross. He freed them from that law of having to keep up with new moons and Sabbaths based on the new moons. Do you understand why now it is not a sin to not keep your Sabbath on Saturday? If you want to Keep the law of the Sabbath. You have to keep all the laws or you're guilty of breaking one. Jesus died to free you from that. So don't think you have to keep it on Saturday. But work six, rest one. He made our bodies to need that. Okay? All right, now. And you have to plan it or you won't do it. Where was I? There needs... Okay, I did that one. It is essential for you to disengage for your own health and well-being. Receive me as your comforter. Value time for yourself before any type of breakdown takes you out of service. You are worth some alone time to rest reload and energize yourself right so I guess that would be talking about people in a family where you always have people around you you may have to tell them look y'all I need some downtime alone with the Lord every Tuesday night at six o'clock I'm out of here you go find you someplace it could be in a library. You think about it. Mark 6, verse 31b in the CJB. I don't, Christian Jewish Bible? I don't know. Come with me by yourselves to a place where we can be alone and you can get some rest. And that was given to Kevin Robinson. See, the Lord looks out after our, our good. 
oh shoot how do I make that disappear see it's at the very bottom and now I can't how am I supposed to read the bottom line let's see if I don't have it pulled up high enough that might be it yeah that's it all right this one was given to Jonas Bolin I have sent those to you that give you counsel do not be afraid to listen to the counsel of those who are wise. But I have a caution for you. As you listen to the counsel of those whom you trust, I encourage you to seek wise counsel from others that you also trust. I will speak to you through wise counselors that are worthy of your trust. Hear their counsel. Allow me to bring confirmation. Now the scripture he used is Proverbs 24 6 NASB. For by wise guidance you will wage war and in abundance of counselors there is victory. I was thinking there was a, a verse that said there is wisdom and uh, something about wise abundance of counselors. But this is not the one I don't think that I was thinking about because I used the NASB. Okay, anyway, this one um, I'm done with. So I'm going to say I plead the blood of Jesus over this video, over the internet connection, over each and every one of us and our devices and all of our internet connections. Okay? With that, I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.